peace. Church, say amen. 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 It's good to know that in the midst of pain, yeah. in the midst of problems, yeah. in the midst of pressure, yeah. in the midst of people, yeah. that you still can have perfect peace yeah. That's right. in Him. And to qualify it, Christine, it doesn't mean it's absence of conflict. It's while the conflict is going all around you, Come on. you still can stay with him yes. and have perfect peace. Amen? Amen. Shall we stand to receive the word of God? Amen. Just want to congratulate again the deacons. Uh, Amen. 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 Last yeah. week, Deacon Davis, Deacon Herman, Deacon White. Amen. 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 For Shelly and Casey, who took the photograph that you saw earlier. Amen. We thank you so much. Amen. And in case you haven't noticed, uh, in the yeah. sanctuary, someone has yes, done some work. Yeah. Uh, the words have been inscribed on our walls. Ephesians 4 11 that he gave some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some teachers. And some evangelists. Amen. It's the word of God. Amen. Amen. And so we thank Brother Coleman, uh, who was here uh, Friday. Amen. And did a great work. Amen. Amen. And we thank you all. Oh, amen. amen. Come and go with us as we greet our live stream Facebook family and our YouTubers who will view later on our channel. Uh, and to you in this congregation this morning, we greet you in the resurrected name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you don't have a Bible, raise your hand and you want one, or you need one. You may need one today, and we want to make sure you have one and can follow the word of God. Don't take the preacher's word for it. Right. Amen. 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 But on your own, you can search and see and taste that the Lord is good. Just a brief word from Romans 10. Verses 1 uh, through 4, I shall be reading from the King James Version, Romans 10, 1 through 4. Our brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to the knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Mm. For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Amen? Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High God. Father, in Jesus' name, no other name given under heaven or earth that we shall be saved. Yes. That marvelous, majestic name. Christ Jesus, magnificent name, and the presence and power of your spirit who is here in this house today. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard thus far. And now we come to the portion of the worship experience where your word shall go forth, unshackled, unchained, unfettered, and it will set out and accomplish all that you set it out to do to rescue a sinner, reclaim a backslider, and give residence or relationship to someone looking for you or a church home. So we need you to hide fields behind your cross. Yes, sir. Keep him under the dripping of your blood. Yes. Right across his heart and his mind, the words that are found in the gospel, according to John, the 12th chapter, 21st verse, Sir, we would see Jesus, whom declared, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. Amen. That Jesus. And in his name and for his sake we pray. Amen. 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 Just from uh, a moment, let me begin a new mini-series uh, out of our major series, Discipleship. Uh, we want to talk from the subject, the ultimate essentials. The ultimate essentials. Find a neighbor and say, neighbor, the ultimate essentials. Now go back about 60, 50 years to your playground voice and say, neighbor, neighbor, the ultimate, ultimate essentials. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're in for a good time today. Watch this. In the time, family, of the pandemic, during the year of 2019, uh, Elder Tanks, the state of Pennsylvania, under the direction, uh, Deacon White, of the 47th governor, Tom Wolf, 
uh, and his administration, uh, Deacon Davis, uh, uh, provided a list of essential and non-essential business uh, related information for clarification uh, and for public acknowledgement. Uh, accordingly, uh, here is the list. Oh, look at Jesus. I didn't think it was going to work. Praise <laughs> <laughs> We pray over you, quit you. Yeah. Essential, and this is the list. I'm not going to go through them, but, but to qualify what we just said, uh, here before you is a list of these essential and non-essential. Uh, essential simply is those uh, that would be needed, uh, uh, most important, and absolutely would remain uh, open to businesses. While the other side, sure, or the chart considered non-essential, uh, classified, uh, 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 not needed, not most important, and not absolutely unequivocally would be open. Uh, the chart was created uh, with the design to protect lives, uh, imposed and the limit the spread of the coronavirus. Uh, when we're looking for a new or used car, uh, essential and non-essential plays a major part in our decision before our purchase. I'm going somewhere. Uh, when considering employment, uh, uh, we will require or pursue a company or business that has essentials, Christina, more like uh, uh, benefits that we know we absolutely need. Uh, they are important needed and absolutely must have. Uh, essentials and non-essentials, uh, Georgina, have been around for thousands of years uh, before the pandemic. And they are a part, Mom Carter, of everyday life, Gigi, even as this sermon is being preached in this hour. Uh, Mother Dorcas and God, who in his uh, 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 infinite and infallible and unadulterated word, uh, has brought to us and before us this text today that we are going to use to see what is absolutely essential. Mm. Uh, this is the ultimate essentials. All right. I talk too soon. Next one. Thank you so much. A definition for essentials is absolutely necessary, extremely important, fundamental or central to the nature of something or someone. Something that cannot be left out if the gospel is to be properly understood. Let me go over the last one slower. Something that cannot be left out if the gospel is to be properly understood. Here are our synonyms for our English etymologist extraordinaires in the house. Our crucial, necessary, uh, key, vital, indispensable, uh, that is requirement in half. Requisite, precondition, <laughs> qualification in half. Uh, this theorem of most importance. Here are our quotes. An essential aspect of creativity is not being afraid to fail. Oh, oh, man. Uh -oh. Come back yeah. uh, quote, when everything seems to be going against you, remember that the plane takes off against the wind, not with it. Unquote Henry Ford. Quote, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us, unquote, A.W. Tozer. Let me say that again. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us, unquote, A.W. Tozer. And the last theologian uh, for today is, quote, I believe in Christianity as I believe the sun has risen, not because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. Come on. Unquote, yeah. C.S. Lewis. And here we have arrived at our takeaways from our text, but let me give historicity and lay the foundation and then we'll move along. Uh, when I'm asked a question, Deacon Davis, uh, 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 by someone uh, uh, who is beginning uh, their journey and their walk uh, uh, and their path, Christina, in salvation, uh, one of the questions that I will feel, uh, uh, which book, preacher, should I read first? Uh, 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 and I will simply reply to them, it's the gospel according to John. Uh, uh, and they will inquire why there and not Genesis, uh, which is the beginning. Uh, because in John 20, 31, from the King James, uh, they record, he records these words. Listen to this. But these things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, yes. the Son of the living God, and believing you might have life through his name. Mm -hmm. So John had wrote uh, Janus 
for, for the truth, Belinda, that we may believe, that we will believe that God is. Uh, 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 and then I'm going to ask a follow-up question is, is, well, after I read John, where should I read next? Uh, and the answer is always going to be, you should read Romans. Why Romans, Pastor? Because uh, 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 when you read Romans, uh, we will be taught both theology and practice how to start and to continue a life live with Christ Jesus wow. as our Lord. Let me go Amen. slower. Come on, Reverend. Set it up. But right. when we read Romans, you will have both theology, not thugocracy, <laughs> theology, practice how to start and continue to live a life lived with Christ Jesus. Watch what I'm saying as our Lord. That's it. There you go. When I say Lord, understand that we have surrendered all that we are to become all that he is. That's it. And we have submitted to what he says in his word we will do with the help of the Holy Ghost. Wow. A quick modified outline of Romans Road to Righteousness provided by Urban L. Jensen will reveal to us, and I quote Amanda, Romans 1, 18 through 320, he writes about sin and our need for salvation. Next, he writes about Romans 3.21 to 5.21, salvation and our way to salvation. He then writes about Romans 6, 1 through 8 and 39, sanctification, our life of salvation. Romans 9, 1 through 11.36, if you've been born again, you ought to be excited that God has provided a way for us yeah. to better understand That's our right. deliverance. Amen. Yeah. He writes about our, his sovereignty and our scope of salvation. And lastly, Romans 12, 1, 16 through 27, chapter is service and our service to salvation. So listen to what we just said. You can learn about sin, salvation, sanctification, sovereignty, and service all in Romans. Mm -hmm. That's too much, Pastor. No, that's not enough. <laughs> Because also it has God's righteousness. Come on. It has God's righteousness in law, God's righteousness imputed. That means if Jesus' righteousness was placed on our account yes. so that we could become righteousness yes. through him. That's right. Yes. I'm going somewhere. God's righteousness obeyed, God's righteousness in election, and lastly, God's righteousness is displayed. This is the ultimate essential. Just before our assigned text, I'm getting excited. Paul, in chapter 9, church, records for us, Earl, Deacon Murray, excuse me, verses 1 through 13, uh, his burden for Israel. Mm. Uh, next subsection in 9, he writes about God who shows mercy as he will. And in the last subsection, uh, he writes for us Israel's stumble. Uh, and so now arriving at our text, here we are, Deacon Banks, at the moment of the hour of power where Paul begins this writing uh, uh, which is huge. He says, brethren, and I just stop right there. Brethren is family, or his countrymen, or those he is associated with. It gets heavier as I go on, because uh, it looks benign right now, but it's really malignant when we get to the read of this text, uh, Jay. He just says, brethren, Amanda. He says, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel. Mm is that they might, listen to this, might be saved. Not like they say saved already, might be saved. Uh, 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 and, and desire, and he says, horse desire, the Greek word is eudokia. It means his kindness and his wish and his purpose and his satisfaction and his good pleasure, uh, Cheryl, and his prayer or petition, Belinda, or his supplication and his intercession to God is that Israel might be saved. Okay. Now that messed me up, uh, Dorcas, because somewhere along the line, I always believed that Israel was God's people. Right. That he had chosen them, that through them, he would be revealed to the rest of the world. But sometimes, beloved, don't get it twisted. Just because God said that doesn't mean all of Israel is for him. Okay, okay I'm going somewhere. Now, 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 now. you got to understand, now watch this, because it's going to get heavy. It's going to get heavy. Watch this, Jordan. Paul is in a dark, dirty, dilapidated dungeon, shackled and chained. 
If that was me, I tell you what, the, the flesh would have rose up real quick. First of all, I'm not asking for no prayer for nobody else. I need to be free. You don't even want to help me with this. What about me? I'm taking the stripes and taking the wounds. I'm the one being beaten and bruised and battered and bloodied and bludgeoned. But Paul is praying for his countrymen who are not saved. He said, I'm praying not just to any politician, not to no president, but to God. The field, the supreme divinity that Israel, my request, Jodina, my intercession is that Israel might be saved. So let me go slow and slow my heart rate. Everybody in Israel, Tim, at the time of this prayer, has not surrendered, has not submitted, nor has sacrificed claiming Christ as their Lord over their lives. I want you to pay attention because I'm going to keep saying Lord uh, Elder uh, Brown for a reason. Because if, if he is not our Lord, he cannot be our Savior. Come on, Reverend. Come on. Come on. See, some folks want enough of Jesus just to stay. We call it fire insurance just to stay out of hell. Right. Yeah. That's true. But he wants, he wants to be your Lord. That's right. That Come on. he's in charge. That's right. That our submission and our surrender is to him. Listen. Yes. Uh, what's clear in the text. And the Holy Spirit who provides illumination, revelation, and application for us to glean and to grasp are three things. Watch this. And I'll try to go slow if you're keeping score. Or you can watch the video later on. <laughs> That'd probably be a better thing. First, watch this. Israel's rejection of God. Not Paul. It's God. Sometimes I get a little offended. I had to grow up in the spirit and learn from kindergarten 101 being saved that it ain't me that they don't like. It's the God in me. Come on, man. Yeah. 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 Oftentimes we take it personal. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't about us. It's about him in us. And Paul understands that. And what's, what, what's Paul's demeanor? He's not upset. He's not, he's not mad. He's not cold. He's not bitter. He's not angry. With none of them. How do you know? Because he's praying for them. Oh, Lord Jesus. It's hard to pray for someone who don't like you. Let me give you a minute because somebody's name just crossed your heart. I know he did. I know. I know. I know. Let me give him a minute. Let me give you a chance to catch up who it is. That trailer just stopped and saw you. Uh, 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 secondly, he still claims them as family. Uh huh. That's why brethren is there. He, Paul is praying for those who are neither justified by faith, uh, they aren't saved because the work of God is not present in their lives. You missed it. Mm -hmm. You can tell when someone is truly saved right. by the works they perform for God. Yeah. Come on, Reverend. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm having a belly moment. Watch this. It's hot up in here. <laughs> Israel was offered righteousness from God, I know Christina, at least three times. Under the prophets, under the law, and under the gospel. Three times they were offered righteousness, but they refused. Somebody's want to know why they refused, Pastor. Well, that's number next. i, I got to wait till verse 2, and I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, thirdly, because i got three things, Rob, i got to get across. Thirdly, that's what I'm saying. They are lovely. Thirdly, they are those who don't even like Paul. These are those who stoned him and beat him, leaving scars on his body, that he will forever remember who they was and who stoned him and who scarred. Can you ever forget somebody who scarred you? Mm -mm. Every time you see the scar, mm. you think about them. Oh, I'm talking right. Maybe the lights will say amen. Uh, uh, and he can never get rid of those scars. These are those Paul is deeply grieved over their wayward ways. This is messing me up because as disciples, we oftentimes don't want to deal with folks who don't like us and who stone us and who scarred us. We don't want nothing to do with them. But Paul is teaching a different lesson today that we still should intercede on their behalf that they might be saved. Amen. So, 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 so Paul's heart's desire and prayer, even though he is bound by chains, 
bound by shackles in a dark, dirty, deplorable, dilapidated dungeon is to intercede, I need to paint the picture, is to intercede for those who don't like him and care nothing about him. And his prayer is to God that they might be saved. Let me give you this line that came across the radar and I had to record this. The burden of souls left no room in Paul's heart for the condemnation of their souls. The burden that was in his heart, watch this, let me say it again. The burden of souls left no room in his heart for the condemnation of their souls. In other words, Paul was more willing, let me give it this way, more willing to carry their burden than to condemn them. See, when somebody makes me mad, I'm going to condemn them. I'm going to send them straight to... <laughs> you can go to... I feel like Bernie Mac. You won't say I'll say it for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth and trying to shame the devil. But Paul is teaching us as disciples that the burden of their souls should leave no room in our hearts for the condemnation of their souls. Amen. This is the ultimate essentials. Here's number next. For I bear them record. Mm. Paul says in verse 2, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. Lord Jesus, but not according to the knowledge. Oh, Lord, this is heavy. This is some heavy stuff. Paul lifts up in the next three verses. Watch this. Three fours. You see it? Four and two, four and three, and four and four. Three fours. Uh, I didn't write it, but I read it. Three fours. Uh huh. Uh, 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 and Paul said, I bear them. It means, the Greek is material, it means to witness, testify, give an honest report with true evidence, Paul says that they have a zeal for God. The Greek word is zealous, a heat for God. That's what zeal is, to be hot for God. Uh, they possess an enthusiasm for God, a fervent mind for God, a jealousy for God's honor. But, that changes the narrative. The word but changes the narrative. But, According to the knowledge or the epignos, it means the recognition of full discernment and acknowledgement. Watch this, Jay. They don't have it. Mm -hmm. So they have a zeal, but they don't have full acknowledgement of who God is. Okay. Somebody's reading ahead. You, you can find it in verse 3, but just wait until I get there. Watch this. In other words, the zeal of Deacon Banks is misguided. The zeal, Amanda, is misplaced. Belinda, the zeal is misconceived. It's misinformed, it's misled, it's misdirected. I'm on a mis mission. And it's mistaken. Amen. Family here in the sanctuary, family, I know you on Facebook Live. Somebody saying amen and family who will view this on our YouTube channel at a later date. Please do not be hoodwinked nor bamboozled. Please do not get God. <laughs> That's what Gail said. Please don't fall or fail for the smoke and mirrors. Please don't allow the pixie dust to blind your heart and your eyes to the truth. Yes. Listen to this. Come on, Listen brother. to this. Come Listen on. to this. The Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on his height of his statue, because I have refused him. Oh, that's not good enough. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man look upon the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Yes. I didn't write it, but I read it. First Samuel 16. 617, 16, get off me, Satan. Jesus declared, watch this, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and the platter within there are full of extortion and excess. Matthew 23, 25. Jesus was saying, our oh, mother Ethel, Jesus was saying on the inside of the cup represents a person's character. It's sometimes those who protest the sins of others the loudest Mm. All right, all right. While secretly they are guilty of the same yeah. sin uh, or something yeah. else worse that they are I'm talking this right this morning. Right. Listen to that. Listen to that. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to that. He says, For I bear record, they have a zeal of God, but not according to the knowledge. This is the ultimate essentials. Here comes number three. This train is rolling down the track. Here's the second four. For they are they being ignorant. I thought that was somebody was cussing me out when they said this when I was young and didn't understand. 
You an ignorant son, but all you want. You know what? <laughs> I thought ignorant was a bad word. Yeah, come on now. This is why I call you ignorant. Especially for somebody who thinks they know everything. Here we are, and I hear you applauding on Facebook. I know you applaud too. <laughs> the second four in verse three, not only they bear a zeal, but they were being ignorant. The Greek is a genome. It means they just didn't know. Uh, uh, through lack of intelligence or information. Uh, they couldn't understand or comprehend or, or have action. When, when you understand, one of the things I'm going to take a PSA for a moment, uh, 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 public service announcement. When we were younger, uh, my dad would give us, there were seven boys uh, in the house, and he'd line us up one by one, oldest to the youngest, and say, listen, I need you to do this, 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 this. He got down to number six. I was there, there I was there, and I was number five, and then Gary was number seven. He said, I need you to go and do what I said. And I just stood there. He said, did you understand? And I just blinked at him like a deer in headlights. <laughs> I said, Dad, I was just thinking. He said, I didn't ask you to think. Every time you think, you weaken the nation. <laughs> go do what I asked you to do. You get it on the way home. <laughs> Every time I was thinking, I was weaker than the nation. <laughs> Just go do what I told you. But when you understand, that's what I'm trying to get to, Junior. When you understand, you comprehend, and your action and comprehension answers the understanding by you doing what was asked of you. Yeah. 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 Now I get out of that moment. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Love you, Daddy. Rest your soul. Uh, uh, they were ignorant of God's righteousness, the decalcimos, or the equity, or the character of the act. Watch this. And when they're ignorant, they cannot be justified because they don't know God's character. Mm, mm, mm. To be in his righteousness. I'm going somewhere. What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Here's why. Uh, they were going about, the text tells us. That's not love. Man, I love the word of God. It's so simple. This is not a hamburger helper. You ain't got to add some stuff in like you cooking something. Let me go get some mustard and some ketchup and some salt and pepper. Now, I'm going to have my own stuff and stir it in pots. Uh -uh, doctor. No. God says if you just read the word, somebody asked me that this morning. If you read the word, God will reveal it to you. Yeah. Here's why they didn't get with God's righteousness. Because somebody said, well, how come, Pastor? Well, in verse 3, they were going about to establish their own righteousness. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, sir. Nothing hard about that. Yeah. Their own self. See, anytime you have self-righteousness, not y'all, not y'all. <laughs> but anytime someone has self-righteousness, there's no way it's a spiritual oxymoron you and I can possess the righteousness of God. Amen. Not when we're about self. Yeah. Can I give a scripture show? Dig it back. Because Isaiah, your son, <laughs> he looked up. Quotes for us that all, all righteousness is as filthy rags. Right. Somebody said that's the word. I didn't write it, but I read it. Uh, and so now I know that my righteousness is not like God's righteousness. Amen. Come on. You mean to tell me, Pastor, Mom Carter, since you amen, Mama, that I can't dress the part? I can't tithe enough money. I can't check the box and go to church on Sunday and then 12 o'clock I can act the way I want to act my righteousness kick in. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Well, I just can't do what I want to do. It's not an Ozzy by, Ozzy by the moment. It's my thing. Well, I can do what I want. I can't do that. Never what y'all trying to tell me. All right, all right, all right, all right. I got the right church, all right, all right. So they were going about to establish their own righteousness. Listen, they have not submitted to allow God to be obedient to God and to be subject to him. There is a fault and there is a folly. There is a failure and it's foolishness yes. for anyone yes. to maintain and follow their own righteousness, yes. not submitting to the righteousness of God and declare they're a child of the Come Most on. High God. Come on. It's foolishness. Yeah. Mm. Talking right. In this portion of the proceedings, Dr. Fox, the Israelites had great zeal. They knew the law. And it was their own desire to convert Gentiles to the law. However, Jordina, this was done without knowledge, uh, not acceptable, and was misguided, watch this, to a wrong cause. Oh, God. Watch this. During midweek meditation on Thursday, 
uh, as we can remember, uh, our hour of power. Uh, uh, the Holy Spirit taught us, watch this, this is why trying to convert someone to your own law is not salvation. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit taught us on Thursday, last Thursday evening, that the law was a standard that God instituted for his people so that they could meet the requirement he desired they would be his children and he would be their God. It's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. Yes. Dr. Berry, it's deeper than that. For what he required and desired of them, uh, if he's going to be their God and they're going to be his people, they needed to understand that the law, Christina, was only to point out the sin. Mm -hmm. The transgression, Ganada, the missing the mark and being out of the way of God. Ganada, we love our illustration and we talk about it often. You and I can sit back and have a party in this moment. When we go up 270, it's not 65. <laughs> you all hear him laughing. He tells me, it's not Junior. I don't do 65. It's 75. <laughs> only until the man in the inlet with the blue and black and white and those bubbles up top. When I see him, that's the law pointing out my sin that I'm going too fast and I quickly try to stop before I get there. Brick blast is all I get. Me and you can either just me and you, bro. We the speakers in the house. And I declare and I decree I'll continue <laughs> until they catch it. Again. Again. I can tell you how I'm going to end. License registration. All he's doing is looking up a statue skip. He's looking up the law yeah. to match your sin or your transgression hey, and then they come back with a ticket. Or that the, you and I could have played golf with that money. <laughs> the law is given only to point out the sin, to mark the transgression and missing of the mark and, and being out of the way of God. But what the law couldn't do, we learned on Thursday night, I hear you, Deacon Davis, what the law cannot do, what the law was unable to perform, and what the law wouldn't or couldn't do, it doesn't have the power to deliver the sinner from the sin. That's right. Yeah. It can only point out the sin. That's right. So while they're trying to, to get Gentiles to accept the law, and, and law is good. Law is not dead. Law is very much alive. Amen. But it cannot deliver the sinner from the sin. That's right. Come on. Sadly, it's true in our society. Watch this. I'm going, so I got to quit. Sadly, watch this. Today in our society, uh, 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 it has crept into the church yes, yeah. unawares. But people from the pulpit to the pews, including the parking lot, mm -hmm. whenever or wherever their day of worship is designated, here comes, I'm going to clear the basis. They establish their own private standard mm -hmm. of righteousness. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but I, I got on assignment. Somebody tap somebody say he's on assignment. He's on assignment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, from, from the pulpit to the pews to the parking lot, a lot of folks walk into God's sanctuary with their own righteousness. They establish, Junior, their own private standard of righteousness. Junior, Dina, they don't, here's how I know how. They don't enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Uh, come on. Oh, God. And they don't enter into his courts with praise. They enter with self-imposed righteousness, will sit down, won't say nothing. I know, well, Pastor, I don't do all that. I don't take all that. I'm an introvert. No, you've been delivered. Come on. You've been saved, born again. God deserves your praise. Come on. He don't need it. But he deserves it and desires it. How do you know? Because a rock will sing your song when you won't. They enter with their own wrongness, Mom Sandy, believing their own righteousness has allowed them to live this long. When the truth is, if it had not been for the Lord on, on our side. Yeah. I hear Preacher Cousins right now. When I think of the goodness of the Lord Come on. and all he has done for me, 
my soul cries out. How far the Lord has brought me, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. This is the ultimate. I got to go, Casey. Hit that last one for me. Hit the drum. Somebody get a drum or something. Hit that last one, God. Thank you, sir. Here comes the last one, and we got to go. Watch this. Verse 4. For Christ, while you're waiting, for Christ is the end of the law. That's the last one. Yeah. It'll come in a minute. Satan, get off the screen. Mm. For Christ is the end of the law. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'll say it to you again. For Christ mm -hmm. is the end, Mother Dorcas, yeah. of the law. Yeah. Watch this and we got to quit. Watch this. The problem and the pain in our text this morning is that there was a misinterpretation uh, and a mispurpose uh, uh, of the law by the Israelites. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Paul's purpose was to remedy the problem and erase the pain to have them know the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, our assignment this morning, my Ethel, is to have listeners and hearers to know the truth. That's right. That's right. Because Jesus declared the truth shall make you free. That's right. It will also set you free. Yes. Uh, 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 watch this. Christ is the end of the law. These are affirmations. Christ is the requirement of the law. Christ is the termination of the law. And Christ is the goal to which the law led. Jesus himself declared in Matthew 5, 17, Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill the law. Yes. Jesus had come to offer himself for those who couldn't follow the law, and the failure of keeping the law. Jesus had come for them. He says, I did not come to call the righteous, come on. but I've come to call the sinner to repentance. I come to seek that which is lost. Jesus is the free pardon for sin. I just need you to flip to John 8, 31 for a minute and 33. I promise you, you will need your word, or flip your phone, whichever one you're operating from. They all work. Uh, uh, John 8, 31 and 33. I'm going to set it up, then i got to go. Watch this. Watch this, because we're close to the close. 8, 31 through 33. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. From the King James, John 8. Somebody got some dust on their page. Blow it off. You may not be. <laughs> King James, watch this. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Uh, watch what they say. They answered him, we be of Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be free? So you see the pain and the problem that Paul is dealing with. Uh, uh, they believe that they didn't need the salvation that Jesus came to, de to deliver and to set free. Yeah. They can follow the law and was in good standing on their own righteousness with God. Wow. 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 So, so it is the lack of need of, for Christ who is the end of the law for righteousness. That is justification before God and being set free from the price and the penalty of sin which is eternal separation from the presence of God. I just need you to turn two pews back. Uh, 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 two, two churches back, they go into six now, and, and I'm almost done. 628 uh, and 29. 628 and 29. Watch this from the King James. Then said unto him, is that the right? Yeah. Then said unto him, you got to see the setup. What shall we do? Oh God. That we might work the works of God. Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Oh, Lord God. Oh, Lord. You're in the notes, Dr. Fox. I got, when, when, this is what I love about Jesus in my notes. I'm going to show you when we get done. When we ask Jesus this specific question or any question, uh, 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 this is what we love about him. 
Jesus will always answer you straight to the point. Come yeah. on. Yeah, he will. Yeah. He didn't give him no other, you got to go to this church, go to that church, be of this denomination, go to this denomination, fall on this. None of that. He says, you need to believe on him who God has sent. Uh, because when we ask him about the Father, or, or who it is about the Father we desire and we inquire about, Jesus gives us the answer, this is the work of God. Uh, watch this, i got to say it again. That you believe on him whom he has sent. Uh, they didn't question the words of Jesus. This is the setup. They didn't question Deacon Davis the words of Jesus. Uh, and I sat and I thought for a moment, uh, why didn't somebody have a question for Jesus after he said what he said? Because if your Bible is correct, after the red, that's Jesus speaking, throw it out and then it got red. <laughs> and then it becomes black, and that's the, the author writing, John's writing after that point, but nobody asked him, did they ask any question? Huh? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, what, what, what is that? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. So, so it tells me, thank you for reading your scriptures, because you can't take the pastor's word for it. Amen. Then they asked him a question. I want to see who was reading. Yeah. Uh, because you can ask a question after Jesus says something. That's the only point I wanted to make. You have every right to question him uh, and the words he speaks. Uh, but that's not what I'm after. Uh, I thank you, sis, for, for validating that, uh, uh, Sister Fox. Uh, they did ask questions. Uh, uh, watch this, uh, uh, and they really don't have any problems with the word of God, so it's okay to ask questions. After all, watch this, this is the reason why they didn't have many questions or anything that wasn't pertaining to what they were talking about, because they had just witnessed, don't miss this, I'm coming down the street hard now, or now I don't want to pass your house. Listen, they, they weren't that concerned about the word, they had some questions, that's okay, Jesus will answer those, but after the words, you got to believe the works. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Let me stay there for a moment. Yeah. Shelly, because what happened was, earlier in chapter 6, uh, they had just witnessed Jesus feed 5,000 plus yeah. with two fish and five loaves of bread. Uh, it's in the text. It the beginning of 6. Uh, uh, so they saw the words, and they saw the works. And so oftentimes, we ask Jesus, we, we don't believe your word, but show us the work. But it does not work that way. You got to believe the word first, and he will do the work. I wish I had some help here. Yes, he will. You got to have faith. But it's not long after that. Because somebody's still reading and sitting. That's why I hope you are. I'm closing now. Because it's important if you keep reading. Somebody said that to me this morning. I kept reading, Pastor, and it came to fruition, and God gave me illumination and revelation. You'll find that Jesus leaves them and goes to a mountain by himself. Watch chapter 6. Oh, it's in there. Like Craig, it's in there. <laughs> it's in there, Robinson. Oh, he goes by himself, Mom. They get in a ship and sail off by themselves. And all of a sudden, a great storm comes. Yes. Mm. It says a great wind arose. Yes, sir. Yeah, it is. It's in there. Yeah. And now they were without Jesus' words. Oh, Lord. But they remember his works. Yes, sir. Lord, mm -hmm. if Jesus can take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed 5,000 plus, surely he can take care of this great old you Come on. Uh, the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So they rode, I got to get to the text. So they rode about 5, 20, 30 furlongs. Front, they kept rowing. And they see Jesus walking on the sea. Mm -hmm. And they were afraid. Watch the transition. Yeah. But Jesus changes the narrative. Yeah. He said, it is I, be not. Those were his words. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me stay there for a moment. Be not afraid, it is I. It is I, be not afraid. The text tells me the disciples didn't do much of nothing else. But all of a sudden, when I keep reading the text, they were in their, they were at their destination simply because Jesus said, it is I, be not afraid. Yes, sir. But it doesn't explain to us what happened to the great wind. Mm -hmm. 
See, when you got a great wind blowing in your life, and Jesus is speaking to you in his eye, be not afraid, you ain't got to worry about how you get to your... Am I too heavy this morning? You don't have to worry about how we're going to do it. If you believe his word, you can believe the works. So I'm going somewhere. Watch this. Let me get back and I'm going to close. Watch this. Watch Where am I? For Christ is the end of the law. Verse 4. Watch this. I got to get back, Sean. I got to get back. Watch this. Romans 8. Or Romans 10. Watch this because this is the close. Verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. See, because they believe his words, his works follow. There was no self-effort on their part that was able to bring them to their destination. And so it is in the, with the relationship that we have with God. There's nothing that you and I can bring to God that can justify us before him. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. I don't care how gifted you is. I don't care how good you look. I don't care if you got $200 shoes on your feet. It doesn't matter if you drive a $50,000 chariot. All that righteousness, that self-imposed, is filthy rags. And so when Christ is the end of the law, and if this is what God messed me up right here. I kept reading that. Is the end of the law, is the end of the law, is the end of the law, is the end of the law. Let me ask you a question. All of us have laws. Is that right? Do, all, do you have laws? In your house, there are certain things. Even if you live by yourself, you check yourself. Amen. <laughs> That's a law. Well, yeah, yeah, we all got laws. There's something about us that we, we, we self imposed with our laws. Mm -hmm. We are. Yeah. Uh, and if somebody violates those laws, <laughs> we're going to check them yeah. and try not to wreck them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so when I understood the horizontal, that all of us have laws, that when it comes to Christ, that I had to let go of my self-imposed law. Come on. Somebody shouting already. Come on. That I'm all right. I'm all okay. No, I am as filthy rags. My righteousness is not good enough to deliver me from the sin that I was in. Come on. I'm going somewhere. Yeah. Come and on, so bro. Christ is not only in the end of the law, uh, fulfills the law, but he ends the law of every person who is born again thinking they all that and a bag of chips and they don't sin in their lives. Come on. Come on, Reverend. Your law is misguided. Yes. It's mistaken. Yeah. It's misinterpreted. Right. That once you come to Christ, all I'm trying to say is your law is dead. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. His law takes over. And it's his righteousness that allows us to be in a right standing, which is what righteousness is, with God. Without him, we can't have a right standing. That's right. right. That's right. There's nothing we can do. There's no flesh that will have glory in the presence of God. That's right. You have to let go of your law and surrender your law and submit to his law and declare your righteousness, which is the righteousness in Christ, that God will accept us and allow us into his presence. That's I can't it. Make it no Come way. on. That's it. I don't want you to be confused today. The devil would have you come to church anyhow. Nothing wrong with it. And I love coming to church. I love worshiping. And I love celebrating God and thanking him and all, all that goes with it. But I do understand that without Christ, I am nothing before God. That's it. It's his righteousness That's it. that makes the difference. It's his righteousness that takes care of. So I don't want you to go out of here and go down to 70 Ganada and do 80 and said Christ ended the law to stay true, but why are you putting me on? <laughs> it's his spirit, that's me and you, boo, I'm with you. It's his spirit that will tell us, go to speed limit, you don't have to deal with the law. That's it. Yeah. He's only there for those who want to break the law. Yeah. yeah, there you go. That's why he's there. And I'll give you a hint, I done figured it out. <laughs> First of the month, 
end of the month. They have quotas to fill. There you go. So if you want to, I'm not trying to do a speaking. Now. I was just telling you when they write the chicken. <laughs> They have a quota to feed. So in the beginning of the month, don't speed. In the middle of the month, don't speed. And at the end of the month, don't speed. You won't get a ticket. <laughs> Unless you live where I live in the, in the municipality, you go 24 and it's 25. Right. They rank yeah. you for going too slow. <laughs> Is that on tape? <laughs> but it's true. And all my assignment today was is to bring the fact that Paul not only is praying for those who think the law and their own self-imposed righteousness and adherence to it is enough to get God's favor. Right. Uh, no, it's not enough. That's right. You can only be in favor with God if you're in the righteousness that Jesus Christ brings and has died and sacrificed, hung on the cross, bled, beaten, bloody, bruised, bludgeoned, and died and resurrected again. It's his righteousness that allows us to be in the presence of God and become his children. Yes. That's, That's all I'm, that was the assignment. That's it. Yes. Not a whole lot of hooping and hollering, but I know people who hoop and holler and they don't buy saved. Yeah. Come on now. When the word of God goes forth, it'll accomplish. That's right. Because now that you and I have class after this, after this old, we're going to prom promise to do better, church. That's our promise and our pledge. <laughs> that was six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, that's just a girl. <laughs> but you got some woes too. But I know everybody's dealing with something right. that God is not a part of. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's why grace is still rolling on. Amen. But it's not lessons for us to continue to sin. Paul says, do we continue to sin that grace may abound? No. Romans 6.1. God forbid. Yeah. Uh -uh. No, we should do it. Uh, according to God, so that God will be well pleased. Yes. Yes. yes, well pleased. But it's Christ's righteousness, not our own self imposed law, that presents righteousness and think we're a child of God. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted to talk about this morning. God gave me the assignment. I want us to just close our eyes for a minute, uh, and I want to open up the doors of the church and we can go. Watch this. There's somebody here or somebody in the room or somebody on Facebook or YouTube, uh, you've been living by your own law, uh, your own self-imposed righteousness. Uh, and, 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 and the tragedy is, just like the Israelites, and the sadness is that you think you can keep the law, uh, it's impossible to keep the law, even your own law. Some of us will testify, we had a law and we broke our own law. Hello, somebody, come on now. Yeah, yeah, we said we weren't gonna do something, as soon as we got out of where we were coming from, we did it anyhow. Yeah. I promised my doctor I would eat better for six months. For five and a half months, I ate everything wrong. Come on, somebody. We have a saying in my house, to, watch this, to do good we make promises, but it's pain we only obey. Oh, Lord Jesus. How many of us have made good promises? But it's only the pain that we obey. Hallelujah. He got me on watch now. And I got to tell Jodine on November the 15th. Where he wants to draw blood and see where we are. I've been doing my push-ups, doing my exercises, and walking right. But I stopped in the oldies yesterday. And they got honey buns up on the counter. Hello, somebody. And I broke my law. See what I'm talking about? I'll, 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 I'll tell you the truth. I broke down and ate, a, ate one of them. I had a headache. Good Lord. No, oh, it's just me and you. Come on now. Come on now. You can't keep your own self-imposed law. That's all I'm trying to say. Be cute. Go out of here thinking that way. Or he don't know what he's talking about. That's him. That ain't well. You just lied. And that may not be your law, but it's God's law. And Jesus has come to, who has fulfilled the law, that in his righteousness, and given us his Holy Spirit, we can say no to sin. Uh-huh. I said it. I said it. 
We are empowered and we are enabled to say no to sin. It's a choice. That's right. You can choose not to do that which God told you not to do. With the power of His Spirit, I got some victorious Christians in the house who know what I'm talking about. And see, when you've been delivered, you don't mind testifying to the truth. But somebody's watching now, well, that ain't for me, that ain't. Well, God is calling you. If you want to be right in his sight, Elder Brandon reminded the scriptures that you share with me all the time. What, what seemeth right to a man is, is, is the end of destruction. It may seem right, but it's wrong. And death is the end thereof in Proverbs. Somebody here may be backslidden. You left God. Somebody wrote me the other day, watch this, this is the gospel. It said, Pastor, I've been out of church because somebody made me mad and I haven't been back in years. They were upset with the pastor. But the pastor didn't save you. Jesus did. Come on, brother. The pastor didn't die for you. Jesus did. And if you follow in man, I want to pray with you right now that you be released from that stinking thinking. Jesus. 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 He said, I haven't been to church. Then there's somebody who may be looking for a church home. There's a couple of things I want to promise you and then I'll, I'll leave it be. That we are not perfect, but we are forgiven. I want to testify to that. This is not a perfect church, but we are forgiven. Somebody needs a home. No more wandering in the wilderness. No more from church to church to church to church. If you're looking for God, and if you're looking for His Word, He is here. Hallelujah. Not in yeah. us, but it's Him in us. That's right. And you want to make this your church home, you can meet me in the aisle or see me at the church. And we can sit and talk for a moment. But since Jesus has come, there has been a change. Yeah. Tremaine Hawkins is leading us in this hour. And the change, Brother Dorcas, is it's no longer my law, but it's his law. It's no longer my way, it's his way. It's no longer my will, it's his will. And when I surrender, and when I submit it, and when I sacrifice all for the cause of Christ, my righteousness in Christ has changed who I am. Who I used to be. All right. things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's right. Anybody looking for a fresh start? Anybody looking for a new beginning? It doesn't matter where you've been and what you've done. Jesus has died for all of that. And His righteousness can bring you to the Father and into the family. I'm out of time, but not all. Shall we stand? Father, we thank you now for what our eyes have seen. Our ears have heard. Part one of the ultimate essentials. The must-have. The absolute. The no doubt about it. We must have, if we're going to be declared born again, if we're going to be disciples for the cause of Christ, if we're going to lead someone to Jesus, Paul has started us on our journey. And next week, he comes again with more of the ultimate essentials. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling, 
present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To him, the only wise God, our Savior, majesty, dominion, power, now and forevermore. And everyone on the side of my voice that's been born again, together we say amen. 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 Have a great week. Amen.